Hey everybody, welcome back to The Virtual Freelance. We're gonna continue with the theme of what works and doesn't work when it comes to creating your Fiverr gig. How do you actually create a gig that's going to land so much business that you're gonna have a backlog of so many orders that you can't even keep up with them? That's the place that you wanna be when you start in freelancing, and I'm gonna show you exactly how to do that for the writing, blog, and article writing niche. That is the market segment we're going to be looking at, and I want to start off by looking at two different uh, blog gigs and why one of them is extremely successful and the other one not so much. The first thing to look at is when you land on a gig, we look at the title. So I will do SEO optimized blog or article writing in 24 hours. That's to the point. SEO optimized blog is what people are looking for. So they've done a good use of keywords for a specific niche, and that's why they're able to get one order uh, from the marketplace. Now, there's a couple of things right away, and I want you to think about it as you look at this gig. What is missing? So the picture looks kind of interesting. It's good use of color, blog, and creative writing. That captures your attention quickly. Uh, it, it's it's got some good design elements. That's well written. But then, look at this. They're a article writer, and Bluck offers sale. Bluck offers sale? Question mark. If you misspell something in the gig title, and you're an a writer supposed to check grammar, spelling, and punctuation, the first thing, that, your first impression when you see this is, why would I buy from somebody that cannot spell on their cover page? It's the same thing if you submit a resume and the resume doesn't have your name spelled correctly on it. Attention to detail. It speaks so loudly that people can turn away almost instantly when they see something like this. You're not gonna get repeat orders. Uh, maybe if you're cheap enough, you might get occasional orders, but don't rely on it. If you wanna be excellent, check the details of your spelling, especially if you're in a blog or idle or article writing niche. All right, a couple other things. 500 words SEO, $5, that's pretty good. It's competitive rate. Standard, they go up to 25. That's kind of a big jump. I would've gone up to Oh, well, that's for five articles, so five times five, 25. There's really no price difference. I could just order the basic five times. What's what's the benefit? Well, you get seven focused keywords. Is that really enough? Mm, not very optimized, and then 10 blogs for $45. That's great if this is spelled correctly. You know, maybe I'll go for that if I had, if I was assured that this was a good writer. The next thing we look at is the description. If you remember in the last video, we looked at two different descriptions. And again, this two line description about the gig shows no effort. It doesn't tell me what this person's writing style is like. And at this stage, I'm gonna be turned off to even go with this art, this writer because I see no evidence that they can write whatsoever. They've misspelled the word on their cover page and I'm turning away. There's, there's no chance I'm gonna be moving forward with them. Uh, no plagiarism guarantee, smiley face. It's nice, great, whatever, uh, with no plagiarism. I mean, I hope there's no plagiarism, but you're gonna see in a minute the difference between a good quality gig description and one that's not, and how they actually even deal with this. I mean, the first thing I see is no plagiarism. What about the, what about the quality of the, of the article? What about the, the experience of this article writer? Um, the, the, are there any examples that I can see this person's writing? Uh, quality of hard work. So that's their subtitle to their profile. That's not even really English. So it's already that now I'm getting scared again of ordering from them. Uh, from Pakistan, that's fine. February 2016. I possess a work experience of five years. So that's again not an idiom to use in the English language. One of the things if you're going to do blog article writing uh, and you're going to charge a premium rate or market rate for your work, make sure that your quality is good enough compared to the competition or else you're going to be, you're going to have to charge 
the bare minimum all the time. If I was this person, maybe if, if my technical expertise is not great in article writing, I wouldn't be doing a gig on article writing. Or I'd be working like hell on developing my skill sets so that I'd be fantastic and be able to really perform. One thing they have good going for them is they have 248 other reviews with a 4.9 rating. But this gig itself does not inspire any action whatsoever. And we're going to scroll on down. Um, all right, a couple other things. If you look at the review, she they got a 3.7 review with a good SEO writer. That is, again, your impression is great, not good. You want to move from good to great. Every single gig is is a testimony to your work ethic, your skill level, your quality, your service. To get repeat gigs and get people flooded through the door, you have to have rave reviews. This is not a rave review. Wh wh where they fell short, maybe they provided a 500-word article. Uh, they didn't ask the person if they needed any revisions. or um, and Fundamentally, maybe their skill set's just not there. It's not up to the right level for what they're offering. And if you do get bad feedback like that, then polish your skill. Make sure your skill's better. Because nine times out of ten, if you deliver high quality work, people are gonna reflect that in their reviews. If you over deliver and you and you provide something of superior value. Uh, I got a gig that I ordered yesterday or, or the day before from a mus musical producer. And not only did they deliver four different versions of the song in three different formats, uh, and they, they responded to my exact request. They also provided a one-page summary of the gig. They asked for a positive review. They had uh, the most positive, you know, the most positive customer communication you can imagine. And I left them the best review because for the price that I paid, they delivered something that was phenomenal in terms of quality. That's your impression. If you're gonna succeed on Fiverr, on Upwork, or any platform, Create that that uh, impression of superior quality in the work that you do. Now, in comparison, let's look at one that is working extremely well. This person, I will write SEO-friendly content for your blog or website. Great. And I'm, I'm actually, let's go to the cover page here. So this is their cover page. I'll write great SEO articles. Right away, you see the person, they're smiling, they're friendly. This is this is engaging. It makes me want to find out, you know, how do they write? And right away, guess what you see? A couple pictures, great. But look, it's an example of their work. If I'm a buyer, this is the first place I'm looking is the pictures and the reviews. Well, I'm going to see this and I can read a couple paragraphs of the work that they deliver. And guess what? It's written very well. So if this is what I'm going to expect, then I have no problem spending $20, $10, or $35 to order a, a blog because I know the quality that I'm going to get is good. And I have the social validation of all their positive reviews. Look at this. I didn't expect that result. I'm a professional businessman, and, I and I'm so grateful that I found you. Big thanks for your effort and clever service. Boom. I mean, all of this... United States, seller produced an excellent article. Uh, my probability that I've landed here, and you can see she's got 12 orders in queue right now. That's insane. So she's working nonstop and constantly getting orders every single day at $35, $10, $20 a pop. She's probably making you know, a few hundred dollars here every day on Fiverr. And she's on her way to a to a top rated seller, more, more than likely, 609 reviews. Uh, I do want to look for a minute at her description. So this is a little bit shorter than we've, we're used to seeing, but look at the writing that she displays in this gig description. Did you know that the first result on Google gets up to 33% of the total traffic? That is such a hook, giving a statistic Show, it shows me that she understands that SEO writing is to generate traffic. It's not just, I'm an SEO writer, I'm going to generate SEO in your article. She knows the algorithm. 
She understands the way to use the algorithm so that you're actually getting results on your website. Plagiarism free, that's something that's important to the, to the buyer. Research oriented, that's what I want. Well structured, SEO optimized. So as a businessman, uh, at this rate, this is a phenomenal price. It's a great service and she explains everything. And she explains in the description, I can see that she's actually good at writing. Let's scroll on down. Aspiring freelancer looking for opportunities. Drop me a message. Very positive. Banners, great visuals, prompt communication. L use these people that are getting tons of work as an example of somebody to emulate. Look at how they're thinking. Not just the words that they're using, but how are they communicating their quality, their attention to detail, their skill level in the gig description and all of the different aspects of the gig. It can be very simple to do this, but it just takes a concerted effort. I want to show you guys really quickly the one star review. Seller changed my keyword of the SEO article, which means that my article has no use at all. Fraud. Great. But then you see her response to this. After submitting and approving close to 10 articles, they, the person said they were wrong, offered revisions, was willing to make them, started accusing them of, of horrible language. So you're going to run into from time to time, like I said, she's got 600 plus reviews. From time to time, you're going to run into somebody that's, that's just dead set on some, some implausible expectation. But you want to you wanna set that expectation up front so you're not walking into a trap. If, if they don't understand what they're getting for, for the money, um, then it may be difficult to keep them on board um, when you deliver a product and it doesn't match their expectation. So always try to set up an ex expectation that's a little bit lower than, um, than they would anticipate and then over deliver. Simple as that. That's why examples of your writing are very important. Um, it's no doubt in my mind that the articles that this seller likely produced for this person were good and usable, but um, you know that lack of of willingness from the customer perspective likely contributed to the negative review. And you'll see a couple other examples of this: quick revisions, poorly written article. Clearly, the articles are well written based on her examples and based on the other positive feedback that she receives. So don't don't be distraught if you have a couple of bad reviews, but when you're first starting off, let those negative reviews come way, way later in the game after you've done 50 to 100, maybe 200 different um, services for people. That's when one or two of them is really not going to hurt anything. 4.9 rating is excellent. Five would be even better, but you can't control every customer. You're going to have a couple like this. Um, clearly, it's not impacting her her level of work that she's receiving, 12 cues in order. Um, and take take the good from this. Uh, and you might say, well, how do I put a put this type of uh, summary presentation in my gig description uh, or as a picture? You you need to get a couple of people on board. When you're starting off, don't just sit there waiting for people to show up if you have no reviews. Get a couple of reviews by offering your work for free. Offer to pay them back. You know, If they pay you $5, give them $4 back or $3 back, whatever the delta is that you would keep from Fiverr. Um, try to entice people. Look within your network. Uh, don't be afraid to reach out. If this is your vision and this is something you want to really commit yourself to, becoming a freelancer, then go all in. Don't just dip your foot in the water and then just wait and say, well, this is not for me. It's got to be an all-consuming vision for yourself. You want to make it work. You're going to do whatever it takes to make it work, and then you will be successful. All right, guys, I hope that this was informative, that it helped you guys see some of the positive and some of the negative of how to actually go about improving your gig blog, your blog and article writing gigs on Fiverr. And this is applicable to any other freelancing network. It's even applicable to your own website. Think about the fundamental principles that drive behavior and then match what the good people are doing and then try to avoid what the bad people are doing and you will succeed. Thank you so much for tuning in to this video. Uh, if you guys want to check out my website, www.thevirtualfreelance.com, you can have more articles on different elements of 
becoming a, su- a successful freelancer. There's a newsletter on there. Feel free to sign up to that newsletter. Uh, if you like this video, leave a like. Drop me a comment below if you have any questions on what are the goods, the positives, the things to avoid. I'll respond right away. Uh, subscribe to my YouTube channel if you can to support this effort. I'm going to grow this into a very uh, large enterprise, and I'm just excited that you guys are here, tuned in today, and, and joining me on this journey. Thank you so much, and I'll talk to you in the next video.